Let me ask another big philosophical question. Um, what, what What's human? What makes us human? What is human? And uh, where did that humanness come from? That's exactly the question we need to problematize because it's what I call the Gandhi question. It's like, uh, you know, Gandhi's asked, what do you think of Western civilization? And he says, it would be a good idea, you know? And so when did humans evolve, you know? Well, n not yet. <laughs> so we don't talk about, you know, when did, you know, ha ha we, we talk about the rise of modern humanity. And what's happened in the last 50 or 60 years or so, which I think is a good thing intellectually, is that we've smeared out humanness to mean many different things. It's not just tool use. It's not just upright posture. Upright posture goes back at least five million years. Tool use goes back at least two and a half million years, stone tool years. But since wasps and chimpanzees use tools, then it's gotta be even older. So that, that's actually one of the things I'm interested in is how have different notions of what is human influenced our theories of human origins? And in particular, there, there's sort of the problem what I, of what I call like sodomy in the uncanny valley, which is how long ago would you be willing to date someone, say someone that existed say 5 million years ago, 10 million years ago, 3 million years ago? In other words, when is it? Like date or one night stand? I mean, uh, either, one. Strong. Okay. either one. Either one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say be the, the, the mother of your children. Um, but that's a lot of commitment, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an interesting question because after World War II, as a result of Nazism, no one wanted to be the one to say that this particular fossil we've just found was anything less than fully human. So there's a projection of humanness arbitrarily back into the past. So that even these little monkey-like creatures, Ramapithecines, Ramapithecus, were being declared to have folkways and mores and language, which is ridiculous. No one wanted to be one to say that Neanderthals were anything less than fully human. So it's a very interesting question. At what point are they us? I mean, human origins is very much an identity quest. It's when did we become us? Which sort of begs the question, what are we? Who are we? Um, and how much is that is the hardware evolution question versus the software, like what the, the actual development of society? Like, can't you argue that we became human with, uh, with agriculture? I mean, can't you argue that we became human with the industrial revolution? Well, certainly by then, they are us. But agriculture is only 12,000 years ago. That's a blink in the eye, right? That's, that's yesterday. It's interesting, prior to the 19th century, most scholars thought that the pyramids were at the beginning of time. Essentially, they were closer to the beginning of time than they are to us. Now, it's a blink in the eye. You know, we use the metaphor of a, of a meter. You know, the earth is five billion, so that's a meter. The natural history of upright humans is five million, so that's that would be like one millimeter. It'd be the thickness of the white of your fingernail, mm -hmm. and then the pyramids are five thousand, so that's a thousandth of a millimeter, a micron, which is the amount taken off when you brush your yeah. fingers on your your jacket. Yeah. So. The, there's a natural history of humanity, and then there's the history of our constituents. We're all stardust, mm -hmm. because all of our complex atoms began in supernovas many billions of years ago. But upright posture, five million. Agriculture, only a few thousand years ago. We cultivate dogs, couple hundred thousand years ago, so those are Paleolithic instruments. Cats mm -hmm. are Neolithic instruments because they're used to kill vermin. Dogs are used to, to hunt with us. But there is what you say, this co-evolution, our social aspect yeah. and our physical aspect. Even the fact that, we're, that we have whites of the eyes. We're the only animal with whites of the eyes. And the whites of the eyes tell intent. They tell direction. They tell interest. They know if, yeah. if you look at something, I can tell what you're looking at because there's a lateral 
resolution. I can tell what you're looking at. That's recent. And the people who do reconstruction for museums, they want to create what I call an ethnographic identity with the viewer. And so they fantasize about all these other early hominids, non-human, pre-human hominids, if that's a word, as having eyes like us, but they probably didn't. Mm. And they were probably not self-aware, at least the early ones can't have been self-aware the way we are, insofar as we are. They may not have spoke. So I'm interested in basically when did we become what we think is human? It's clear that when we start burying the dead and making jewel making jewelry and and mm. uh, when we in, in a sense invent fantasy, when we invent deception, mm -hmm. that's human. That's full of human. We become human by thinking there's a world that really is not. I mean, that's that feels like we're start to operate in the space of ideas more and more. So to to have deception, to have imagination you start to be able to have ideas and share them. And it feels like the sharing is the thing that really develops the ideas. So it's not you That's come right. up with ideas. And you, we become able to sort of understand what each other is thinking. Some animals can do this to a certain extent. Dogs have a certain empathy, but it, it's it's limited. It's highly limited. But it's, you could probably argue that the dogs got that from the humans. Yeah. I mean, like, humans and dogs have co-evolved, have definitely co-evolved, because it's over 100,000 years we've been working together they are but, but all our hands have evolved with tools and so i'm trying to figure out now the original purposes uh, purpose of acheulean hand axes the old the first beautiful tool made by humans which were made unchanged what, for, what kind of axes is this? they're called acheulean hand axes they're the these beautiful teardrop shaped objects that go back 1.5 million years and what's your thought about its possible purposes well the most important thing, I to think, murder? is that- A jealous, jealous, jealous husband comes home. <laughs> what's astonishing is that no one knows what they were used for. Yeah. So they may have been maps, they may have been weapons, they may have been chopping devices, they may have been sexual displays. Oh, like ornaments to, to display something versus a, actual practice. Like, like the peacock's tail. 